Hello everyone, welcome back to part 14 of the Mystery of the Bevel Blocks. If you have not already, please consider watching the previous episodes to get acquainted with some of the concepts that we are discussing. Now before I begin, I have some announcements for you guys. First, thank you guys very much for over 500 subscribers. We're almost to 550 now, that's awesome. I've done no advertising. I do no sens sensationalism. I do not monetize. You guys know that. So I really appreciate all you guys sticking around to hear what I have to say. I depend on the merit of my research for my followers. So the fact that you guys are sticking around shows that I think there's some merit to what I'm talking about. So I really appreciate this, guys, and hopefully we'll keep on growing. But I'm not too worried about that. All I'm worried about is having good discussion with you guys so far. That's been excellent. I've had almost no negative comments, almost no downvotes or people leaving the channel. So it's been very stable and very uh, good discussion and very uh, polite interactions with you guys. I really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And hopefully we can continue that. And uh, even with some growth, maybe we can get some more people talking back and forth. I know we're getting a lot of views and not much discussion, but the discussions I have had with you guys have been phenomenal. And I really enjoyed seeing a lot of your all's points of views and getting a lot of good insights. And I like seeing you guys around in the other videos in the comment sections, too. It's nice interacting with you guys there and bouncing ideas off of you. So hope to see more of that in the future. And uh, also, Ancient Alternative View just broke 100 subscribers. Awesome, Philip. That's great. You've made a great start. Starting a lot of uh, discussion here on some topics that not a lot of people bring up. So very good work, Philip, and hopefully we can do some more collaborations in the future. Also, you guys, I really want you to go see Uncharted X Ben's most recent video. It's the first part. He's going to split it up into parts uh, for the Serapium of Saqqara. And right at the beginning of the video, he shows my favorite part of the Serapium. He says it's his favorite part, too, is this one box that is not on display with the others. And it's a little bit different than the others, guys. The lid is not the faceted shape like the others and like the one at the bottom of the Osiris shaft and like the Alexandria sarcophagi. This one is the bed frame style, like I've been talking about in the other videos. The squared off ends, and then it's hard to see because there's not very good light and they only go around it for a little bit. But you can see it in Ben's video that I believe the top in the middle portion is arched. It's rounded. And then I'm assuming on the other end is going to be another squared off corner, squared off end with a nub on it. Look at that, a large nub. That's very interesting. The other ones don't have nubs. They have square recesses. But I'm telling you guys, the square nubs, the square recesses, it's all the same technology, all the same processing evidence. And I'm going to propose all the same culture, civilization, group of people. And finally, some unfortunate news, and this is hitting YouTuber Wise Up and probably a few other people as well, but our Google Plus albums are going away, guys. Uh, starting in April, I believe, they're going to terminate them, and everything on them is going to be deleted. And we have the ability now to back up, archive all of our work. I have about two gigabytes worth of pictures that I'm going to try to save, all my lists. Uh, it's going to... The channel will go on, of course, but it's going to limit our ability to discuss the sites and see them in high quality, high resolution. So all I know to do now, guys, is I'm going to present the Bevel Block episodes and the other uh, Pandora's Box episodes from my home albums on my personal computer. I'm going to save all the pictures to my personal computer. And if you want to see the pictures yourself, I can provide you links, but... Unfortunately, if these pages that the links are hosted on ever go down, those links will no longer work. So over the course of time, we might lose track of some of these photos. So we'll do the best we can. I'll try to save as many as I can till my hard drive fills up. Maybe I'll get another hard drive. But we'll see what we can do with uh, what we have now. I'm sure we're going to get a lot farther before we run into any of those problems. But we're going to deal with it, and we're going to keep moving on.
Okay, let's get on with the episode. Now, hopefully the audio is okay for you guys this time. I'm using the default microphone. We're going to try that out and see if it's a little bit clearer. The Crusader Castle list, the website I'll have in the description, readtiger.com, list of Crusader Castles. And what I'm doing and what hopefully you guys can do along with me here is we're just going to go down the list and try to spot the hallmarks that we've been looking for in all the previous episodes and see if we can make some connections. Now, I've already gone through a lot. You start down here where it says Crusader Castles by Modern States. And I admit a lot of these in the beginning here, they do not seem to be bevel block or have many primary hallmarks, but there are some that have secondary hallmarks, just architectural designs that are eerily familiar to us, and maybe some square holes and some blocks, uh, nothing that can be conclusive or uh, be determinative, but just interesting, and uh, if we look a little closer, we might see some legacies and uh, maybe even some re-incorporated re elements from other sites. I think there might be something to that. We can discuss that later. But we start down here in Cyprus, and I'm just going to go through the ones that I've found that are definitely connected. And if you guys maybe find evidence of some of these other ones, let me know, and I'll be happy to add those retroactively. So here we go. So the first one and the only one I really could find in Cyprus here is Famagusta. And this site has some interesting things going on at it. Um, now, this triple arch has some square holes in it, some of them kind of in anomalous areas. I'm not quite sure if this structure is bevel block or just tightly fitted dry laid, or maybe there's even some mortar. The picture won't let me get any closer before it breaks down. But we notice that there's rows of square holes like this. This set's kind of odd. It goes right to the edge of the arch. I'm not sure what that could have been. Some of these other ones that are paired, you know, statuary stuff, uh, more ordinary things. But some other ones are kind of odd. And then you see all the foliage along the top here growing. Some of those could be growing in square holes, perhaps. So very interesting arch. Interesting columns, one-piece columns. A lot going on in the background, too, as well. These blocks, some of these look dry laid at the bottom. I'm not sure if I maybe restored at the top up here mortar. Interesting. 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 Uh, Shapes again, we see the Islamic more pointed and then with a rounded in the foreground. So combination of both and even over here, over here in the background, another rounded arch. Very interesting. And we are also at Famagusta here. This site seems to be pretty diverse. There seems to be lots of different ruins around it. Um, this one definitely reconstructed. You can see a lot of mortar and rubble fill, but I saw this photo, I said, ah, oh, look at these blocks. They seem to have some interesting erosion in them, damage in them. They seem to be, some of these seem to be pretty square. So maybe some of these blocks are reincorporated and the site has been reconstructed. And again, this is a pretty interesting area. This looks pretty ruinous and eroded. You can see where some of the better blocks the more tightly fitting blocks are down here. This might even be all dry laid down here. It looks to be. Maybe slight mortar, I'm not sure. That looks pretty dry laid in the background here. All this upper structure and this arch is all ruinous and patchwork of mortar and rubble and heavily eroded blocks. These blocks are very interesting. It looks almost like coral. It's so porous. Um, but then some of this damage down here at the bottom with these lower blocks, this damage looks almost, I'm going to say that looks square. And some of these other ones looks very square. So the blocks, the holes in the blocks, are they square holes? And what is that a sign of? It, it, like if these are porous, like, like a loaf of bread, or like we're, we're assuming maybe geopolymer, then was there some kind of 
force being applied to these soft blocks that would maybe cause them to puff up and shape and also leave these anomalous square holes peppered throughout them. If you cracked open one of these blocks, would all these little square holes continue throughout the block? That's what I want to know. And then I saw this picture and then I said, oh yeah, there's definitely something going on here because whatever is being applied to those blocks, that's not just erosion. You see here, some of this is erosion, maybe, but other part, portions are clearly worked by man. And how much of, of what you see here would you attribute to man? Just these uh, more geometric shapes? This looks like a giant knob to me, a knob in the bedrock, and maybe these other ones here. Is this, is this evidence of where they were pulling blocks out? Like, is this the quarry? This is a very interesting quarry, if so, just the way that they're pulling blocks out one at a time from the face. Usually it's in a stair step that they would do this. It's a lot safer and a lot easier. You're not undercutting your own work surface. So I don't know what's going on in this photo. I see some work surfaces, but I cannot divulge a, a purpose or a function for any of this uh, other than this is quarrying evidence. But even if it is quarrying evidence, it, I think it's very odd quarrying. And um, there may be some uh, repeating scratch marks, parallel scratch marks. Uh, this is about as close as I can get on this photo. It's not everywhere, but maybe down here and maybe over here. It doesn't seem to match this angle. This is more of a shallow angle. This is a, a harsher angle over here and here. But perhaps that's natural. But this is obviously not natural. And this is not natural. Now, next on the list was actually acre walls in Israel. But we already discussed that site in episode three. It is the thumbnail for episode three. So if you want to hear more about that site and see it in detail, you can check that one out. Now, next we're going to go to Belvoir, and it's also Belvere, B-E-L-V-E-E-R, I believe. So some of these sites have multiple names and different variations of their names. So I'm going to try to keep them straight, and if I get any of them wrong, you know, feel free to correct me. Now, this site, Belvoir, we discussed it in the earlier episode, and we can go into more detail here. I want to point out right away that there's two different colored blocks at this site, dark stones at the bottom and lighter stones at the top. It's a two-toned structure, and I'm going to propose that all of it is of the same time period. The original builders did all of this. The execution seems to transmit across the, the material the, the same, so I have to assume if the executions are of equal quality and some of the erosion looks of equal age, I'm going to have to assume that it was of the same time period in the original builders. In this picture, you can see the gate. You can see some of the blocks are bevel blocks. Here, this little one up here, these other ones, some of the other ones over here. Not all of them are bevel, bevel blocks now. That's, that's important to note. If this was uh, to save time, they would do this on all the blocks. If this was for decoration, they would do it on all the blocks. You could propose that this means that it's rebuilt because in the original structure, they would all be lined up, but not necessarily. I don't want, I want to point out that this is, this looks too good in terms of execution with the tight fitment. Look, even some of the, the angles here on some of these blocks here, this one here, uh, like we mentioned before, some of these blocks that follow the contour of the arch. This is all so well done. I have to assume even up to the point where it's really eroded away that this is all original structure here. Very interesting execution. Only some of them have very shallow bosses on the bevel blocks. And here's a great photo that shows a lot, I believe. Now, we can see in the background there's some mortar and fill on some of this stuff. I don't know if that is repair mortar. Same with the foreground. Is this repair mortar stuffed into heavily eroded blocks like we saw in the previous picture up at the top? Or is, is this 
indicative of rebuilt structures and a reconfigured site that is also possible. And I find that the fact that these arch pieces are still so well put together and oriented so well that these are the original arch pieces. So if this was reconfigured, they salvaged all the original arch pieces and put them back. If there is mortar, I see some spots where it could be that more than likely is repair mortar. And this could be a secondary location of this arch, but it could also have been resurrected from the original location. The right hand portion looks very intact, doesn't it? It, do it doesn't look like there's too much deviation, whereas the left side has a, a lot more deviation. So more than likely the left hand portion of this was obliterated and they found all the pieces and put it back together. That's what I have to see. The, the right side, very interesting execution, right? We have one tiny little bevel block here and some other ones that don't have bevels. And I want to point out on the left side some of the bevel blocks that seem to transition in their colors. The bosses are a lighter color, almost like the upper stones and up here as well. And as I believe this one is a broken away bevel block and we'll try to zoom in again. I don't know how close I can get. Yeah, before it gets pixelated, but we can see all this pitting in here. I wonder what's going on with that. Is any of this pitting square and was this, how did this bevel block break off? It's interesting, isn't it? it the, the rest of the block is intact, but this portion is broken away. Or maybe this is a small single bevel block and it's been stuffed with mortar. And this is a finely dressed stone. It's very hard to put this back together, right? Some of these blocks, if, if they were put together in their original orientation so haphazardly, then putting it back together by later peoples, it would be almost indistinguishable from the original plan. Very interesting, like Legos. And here's a good photo. This shows a lot of mortar. Now, this whole left-hand portion here, this lower area, all this appears to have repair mortar in it. The upper portions still all dry laid. They have not bothered to fill any of these. Um, the I believe this might be an original restored, uh, re maybe renovated a little bit. Some of these upper blocks, we don't know. But this could have been an original element of the structure that they attempted to salvage and preserve. You can see on the right the light portion in between the joints. I, I have to say all this is mortar uh, unless the inside of all these blocks are this light color, but you have to crack open one of these blocks to see and we see other areas where these blocks are broken open and they are dark inside. So I'm have to assume this is all repair mortar maybe ancient repair mortar that's all crumbling and falling out. And here's a great photo. This shows the lower, darker bevel blocks against this. This, this is heavily eroded, which, I mean, this shows you that whatever the bevel blocks down here are made out of, the stone, it could withstand weathering and erosion a lot better than the limestone upper. I'm assuming this is some kind of basalt, and this is limestone heavily eroded right guys but it's still i believe all this would be in its original location and orientation here so all of all of this if it's so eroded and sitting on top of this must preclude that this is also very very ancient and i i think maybe there might be some instances of stones maybe be put back in maybe the interior here is reorganized and uh, rearranged here. Maybe some of these in, inner walls weren't there in the past, but for the most part, I think a lot of what we're seeing here is the original structure, and it's just so heavily eroded that that must imply that this thing is thousands of years old. And then finally, the photo that I showed you guys in the previous episode, the corner of the fort. A uh, very interesting wall here. A lot of foliage growing in it. Could be some holes there. Uh, the white streaks here, repair mortar, secondary, uh, who knows how much later. But the upper areas here still seem to be pretty dry laid. No mortar has been applied to some of these better fitted areas. And uh, again, like I proposed in the last episode, some of the damage, the erosion, the peppering of these little holes throughout the blocks, maybe some of that is square and maybe it's some of that like in the other example at Famagusta, maybe some of that is indicative of how these blocks were made. 
Next is Banias, B-A-N-I-A-S. And I'll take you through this site the same way I first went through it. Uh, at first, I didn't think much of this. I saw, okay, well, maybe this is uh, this is nicely executed exteriors, but the interior of this structure was clearly all ruinous. Maybe this is original configuration, nice outer cladding of ashlar stones, and then all ruinous interior. Maybe this is later repair. They found the ruins, the lower ruins, and attempted to repair the upper structure, reclaimed arch elements. I wasn't sure. And then I also saw a little, maybe that's a bevel block. I couldn't say it was for sure, but it looked kind of like a bevel block. And then we'll go to the next photo. And then I said, okay, well, yeah, there's definitely something going on here. These photos are amazing by the way. They're very, very detailed. Probably some of the best detailed photos that we've had so far. I saw the square holes in the tops of these. Now let's zoom in to really look at them. Now look at these. They're not parallel. This one is close to parallel. This one is at an angle. These at angles. And then look above it. Look at that circular stone. Why? Is this all rebuilt and restored? Was this plonked in there later? I don't know. It's very well, that little cut there, very well done. But why? Why would that circular piece be there? You can see it slipped. At some point, the arch has slipped. But maybe this is still all original here. Or if this was, if this was reconfigured, it was done a long, long, long time ago, right? But this is, this is a very interesting configuration here. Very interesting. I see some foliage, right? Even some of the foliage in the block. Look at that. There must be a hole in that. Very tight fitment. Now, other holes, these could have been for, uh, you know, these are attachment points for things, more than likely, functional purposes. It gets very eroded down here at the bottom. Very interesting site. Very, very interesting site. The arch pieces here are really well done. You can see how tightly fitted the lower portions are, and it kind of matches. You can see this seam that kind of goes along and completes the arch up here, the end of the nice, finely dressed stone. So was this all nice and finely dressed all the way up? I don't know. This, this interior stuff, is this secondary? I don't know. And going around the corner here, this is where we just were, over here in the middle, you can see this one stone has this extra little corner to it. Very interesting the way that's executed. That's very familiar to us. We've seen that in a lot of other sites, this polygonal stonework. Very subtle, though, very subtle execution here. Not many other instances of it in the site that I've seen, but right there, there's a definite polygonal piece. And then I saw this photo, and I said, absolutely, 100% connected. Not only do we have the bevel blocks, only a few of them again, but look at these circular pieces. This reminds me of this, the Sidon Sea Castle with the same elements in the lower portion of that structure. Some of these pieces have square holes in them. That is more than likely indicative of column fragments, right? Because column fragments, the column segments would have square pegs to connect them all together and keep them oriented correctly. Some of the other ones, though, do not. And this looks like pretty fine surfaces. This obviously broken away, but the one over here and the one over here on the right, those are nice surfaces, but they don't have any square holes in them. Maybe they were not column segments. Maybe that the, the way these were created, that they would just required having the square pegs on the end to spin them if they were turned on a lathe. They were the connection points. Uh, just because they have those does not necessarily mean 
that they are column segments. That was part of the process maybe on the way to making the column segments. But in this case, I think they just wanted to use the round portions for whatever reason. Otherwise, this is all reclaimed and restored and rebuilt. And that's very possible. Like I say, these structures are like Legos. These blocks are like Legos. You can take it apart and put it back together with relative ease. So what, what are we looking at here? Are we looking at a reconfigured wall, a reconfigured structure, or are we looking at an original structure? I don't know. It's so conglomerate in the colors of the stones, the arrangement with the bevel blocks, they're only in some areas, more in the top than in the bottom. So this is one of those very puzzling photos and I really enjoy it. I like looking at it because it, it just, it baffles me some of the evidence here. Some of the, the, the lower stones have, we'll zoom in, have some strange damage. This one has some strange burn mark maybe. And this, these down here are very porous. Other ones, the other ones are interesting. That's very solid. That's a very dark, solid stone. Very well cut. Some more of the darker stones up the top. It's just strange how some have bevels and some do not. Every block is a different shape and dimensions. The rows are pretty much the same, but every block seems to be a different dimension. Very, very interesting structure. This is a great photo. I just wish it was in better focus. I think the photographer moved a little bit. So these blocks in the background are a little fuzzy. If they look fuzzy to you. They're fuzzy to me too. It's a little out of focus down here, but you can clearly tell this lower structure is different, isn't it? This is all bevel block. The right hand portion finely dressed, but the left hand portion, all bevel block. You see that? Even the corner, a sharply defined corner there, like we saw in some other examples. And what is going on with this transition? Is this the interior more uh, crudely done portion of the structure, but still the original structure? Did the, the original exterior have this cladding of ashlar blocks and then the interior was much smaller, much cruder, but still executed very well. You, know, you can see how it's kind of separated over time, but it's still holding together. I'm going to have to assume that this, even this smaller stuff is very old. If it's not original, it's very old. But is it original? And, and is it an interior where this stuff is the exterior? Now we saw that at acre walls as well. And you can refer to that as almost an identical comparison to this. But larger bevel block exterior, a lot smaller, cruder blocks, but still in tight fitment for like an interior. Everything up here all has mortar in it. So obviously this is later. And even some of the stuff over here, this is all stucco, I assume. Small blocks, much later. But this stuff down here, truly ancient. And the execution of finely dressed and bevel block side by side, literally side by side. So I have to assume that they had both capabilities and they chose one execution over the other at their discretion. And one final look here at Banius. This is probably the best photo I could find of the lower portion. And you can see some of it is dry laid. Other portions appear to have had mortar smeared in over here definitely mortar smeared in but i assume that the original structure was dry laid so very interesting right very interesting construction the lower portions definitely connected very interesting next bayet xian now this one has a few different spellings um the way that i found it was b-e-i-t space S H E apostrophe A N. And this site 
I love this site. This site shows textbook example of an older bevel block site that was expanded upon and maybe re-stacked blocks, reincorporated blocks, but the original structure here, the lighter stone core. We'll zoom in. You see a lot of mortar and the darker stone, yes, but this lighter stone structure here, this is all dry laid, all bevel block in this portion. Some of the other ones up here don't, and the ones in the bottom don't, but it seems to have the central band of bevel blocks. So that's very interesting from about, well, pretty much the whole corners and uh, from about uh, here down to here. So I'd say about five or six courses of bevel blocks and even one here that doesn't, but on the other end it does. Very, very strange, right? And even some other pepper, ones peppered throughout do not. Now, what do you notice about some of these lower blo blocks here? This is very, very interesting. This is a square stone at a corner, a small filler stone. That is a hallmark of so many other sites. Easter Island even has the wall with the small filler stone at a corner. That is such a quirky, unique building style. No one else did that but the ancient builders. And it's a hallmark. It's proof of their building style. And look over here. Nubs. One, two, three nubs for lifting. Tell me those are for lifting if the other blocks that are larger do not have them. It's decoration, I guess. Maybe it had other purposes. Maybe there was more to them and they're eroded away now. But very interesting to me. Only three on this wall. And the bevel blocks only in this band. But a really amazing site. Bayat Shion. Also in Israel. Very, very interesting. A lot going on here. And even with this darker stone, where did this darker stone come from? Was this the original structure? Could this perhaps be the original upper structure that collapsed? And then they've taken the stone and reincorporated it. Like the last site, Belvoir, we saw the darker stone at the bottom and the lighter stone up top. Could this be an inversion of that? Could there be more to the darker stones down here below that are in their original locations? So could this be another one of those two-toned, dark and light colored stone bevel block structures, all contemporary to the same time period? Maybe. And then collapsed and then reconfigured, recycled later. And actually, guys, I think we'll close it up there since the video is starting to get pretty long. Here's a photo of acre walls. I wanted to include it just so you guys could see. Uh, think about this now. Could the outer bevel block structure even stand up without some kind of inner structure behind it. So in this example, in this instance, I'm going to have to say that these smaller stones are done by the same builders that did the bevel blocks. Uh, the quality is, in the fitment is still just as good as the bevel blocks. They just chose to have the smaller stones for ease of moving and, and stacking, I guess, and then only choosing to use the larger bevel blocks where it was important against the ocean, obviously. And finally, uh, a little honorable mention here. I didn't really know how to uh, include this one. Larnica, Cyprus, that site was not a bevel block site, but near it is the Camares Aqueduct, K-A-M-A-R-E-S. So what do we see right away, right in the middle, bevel blocks. And I'll point out that this is the only instance, except for way down here at the end, three more columns, vertical elements, that have bevel blocks. None of the rest of the structure does. Why is that? That's, that's very strange to me. Zoom in. These corner blocks, all bevel blocks. They go up around the arch and down the other side and then turn back into more of this ru ruinous and also finely dressed stuff, though. So... What's going on here? Why only this one portion and then the other portion down at the end? Are they reclaimed blocks? Or is this all original? 
So I hope the audio was okay for you guys this episode. Let me know if you like this microphone better or if you like the other one, we can continue using that one. And uh, I apologize if this episode was a little scatterbrained. Uh, a lot of these sites I'm hearing about and seeing for the first time. So I'm still very new at this crusader area of research. I've recently picked up a book by Graham Hancock and Robert Bavall, The Master Game. Now this is on the Cathar Crusades, and I believe they talk about some of the other Crusades as well. Uh, very good book. I'm only about a quarter of the way through it so far, but already I'm learning a lot about the Crusades, and uh, I'm finding out some very interesting things about some of these groups, these Gnostic heretical groups, and their predecessors. They go back very, very far, back into the Roman times, and perhaps even earlier, to the time of Christ, perhaps even earlier. So there's something going on with these guys. Uh, for example, Carcassonne in France, one of the Bevel Block sites we discussed, it is associated with the Cathars. So I already want to know as much as I can about the Cathars. And in one of Vlad9VT's recent videos on the Royal Kurgan of Kerch, that is a bevel block structure. It looks kind of like uh, the beehive tombs, uh, has the corbelled arched entryway. That site, he points out, has Templar graffiti in it. And Ziggy Dan and I and some other people have been discussing the instances of graffiti at these sites by ancient groups, Templar graffiti, Crusader graffiti. So we'll start looking for that a little bit closer seeing if there's any more connections to be made there. I think there is. I, we do think, me, Ziggy Dan, a few other people think that maybe the Crusaders, the Templars, and some other groups were involved in these bevel block sites looking for these sites uh, beyond the Crusades. If these were sites that were inhabited before the Crusades, and then once they got a hold of them, they converted them, made them more defensive. We, it's still very early on. We don't, I don't want to say anything for sure, but it seems like there's some kind of connection that at least these Templars were looking for these sites and trying to take them over and expel these heretical groups that were occupying them. And perhaps it goes deeper than what the belief systems of the people were. Perhaps it goes into the structures themselves and they wanted to reclaim the structures because of their importance and their antiquity. So some things to consider. Uh, it's nothing's still set in stone. A lot of this is still up in the air for discussion. I admit I'm still very new at this, so I'm probably going to get a lot of facts wrong. Feel free to correct me. Also, you might want to check out Chuck at CFApps 7865's recent video on the Shroud of Turin. Some pretty interesting things in that video. And we may perhaps collide in some of our research, uh, the time periods uh, that are going to collide. And he points out that Haran and Sogmatar. Those are very important sites, and Haran is a bevel block site. So we're going to keep an open mind, but a close scrutiny as always, and we're going to see what kind of things we can divulge here. A lot of new mysteries popping up this year, I think, guys. So thank you very much for hanging out with me again. I appreciate it, and we will talk to you next time.